Consider supporting the work of Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian by becoming a monthly patron. Your contributions will help keep the resource alive and support its mission. Visit patreon.com slash NAH blog to learn more and make a contribution of three, five, ten, or twenty dollars per month. Again, that's patreon.com slash NAH blog. You can start or stop anytime. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian podcast. I'm your host, Rolando Tompkins Jones. I'm a social worker, social justice educator, writer, organizational consultant, and now podcaster who works to build more equitable and inclusive communities. I am also an aspiring humanitarian. My experiences have shown me that in the process of working for social justice outwardly, it's also important for us to continue to critically examine ourselves, shedding attitudes and behaviors that are oppressive to make room for those that are more inclusive, just, and humanitarian. What is an aspiring humanitarian, you ask? When I say humanitarian, I don't mean humanitarian in the harmful sense of placing ourselves in the role of a benevolent hero who's there to swoop in and save others. I mean dedicating one's life, time, and energy to honoring the ways that our destinies are intertwined. It's about accepting the lifelong pursuit to become more humane to those around us, with the recognition that we lose important parts of our humanity when we allow and enable the suffering of others. It means acknowledging our many contradictions and complications and aspiring to do more, aspiring to do better. It means acknowledging that systems of oppression exist by design and not by accident and working towards an individual and collective transformation that includes an unshakable belief that our society's safety, viability, survival and ability to thrive is only as secure as our most marginalized community members. Since 2011, my blog, Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian, has been a place where I've written and curated content on issues of equity and social justice. Through using written word, film and video and other forms of media for social justice education, I hope to continue to expand and enrich the narratives about social issues that face our society and to find ways to take action while encouraging others to do the same. Today, the blog and now the podcast is for others who share a passion for that same journey. No matter who you are, where you come from, what your identities are, or what area of work you're in, there's room enough for all of us in this work. And I hope that engaging with the podcast or the blog can move you closer to discovering or reaffirming your answers to the questions that you may have about how you can best be of service. Thank you for choosing the Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian podcast. I'm your host, Rolando Tompkins Jones. This week's episode is going to be a peek in the life of parenting while black. I'm going to be sharing a letter that we had to write to our child's daycare when it came to a theme day that was titled Crazy Hair Day. So, just want to say, you know, to be to be black and and raise black children comes with a lifetime commitment to safeguarding their physical and emotional safety as much as possible as they navigate systems that are hostile to them. The education system is but one of many. So during a talk on post traumatic slave syndrome, I once heard Dr. Joy DeGru share about her involvement in her grandchildren's education process in which she asked teachers and what mechanisms do they have to do they have in place to help to mitigate the impact of white supremacy in their classrooms as an overwhelming amount of historical and contemporary evidence suggests that it's not a matter of if but when harm would be done in the classroom to children with black bodies i have my own experiences navigating anti-blackness in education and it resonates with an additional sense of urgency as I reflect on my, my own journey as a, as a Black parent raising a Black child. So I'm going to share a letter that I wrote to my child's daycare in response to this crazy hair day theme, because it starts early. I understand that the center held a crazy hair day event recently. 
Although our child was not at school that day, I wanted to reach out and share links to a few starter articles and speak to why we find Crazy Hair Days challenging as Black parents. We recognize that the intent of this theme day is rooted in good intentions, and our goal here is to focus on the impact instead. Though it might seem subtle to some, we see Crazy Hair Days as being connected to a larger pattern of messaging that communicates to white children as well as children of color that there are certain standards about what normal hair looks like that more often than not define Black children's hair as being abnormal and out of bounds of what is considered acceptable. We see this messaging institutionalized and reinforced in the ways that many Black girls are sent home, suspended from school, or otherwise disciplined for wearing their hair the way it grows from their heads, and also see it reflected later in life in the workplace, prompting recent legislation in New York, for example, banning hair discrimination in hiring. We are intimately familiar with the impact of this messaging and the way it's connected to very real decisions made by educators and the results of those decisions on the lives of Black children as they navigate their educational journey. And as Black parents, we strive to be proactive about the ways to support our child's self-esteem and self-image, offering counter-narratives where we can, and also staying in communication with schools and teachers about the impact of messaging like this for the benefit of all children, as no parent wants their child to feel othered or internalize harmful messages about themselves. We feel confident that you'll be willing to, you know, open to having this conversation and will receive our message as a starting place for continued reflection and action. We also understand that this might be a part of the company-wide curriculum or programming and any decisions about modifications may be beyond your individual control. However, if there are people in the company who have more official agency to make changes regarding Crazy Hair Day, who we would be able to talk to and share this message, please let us know that as well. And so in addition to to writing this letter to the educators, I also also compiled some links to articles that I'll definitely share in the show notes of this episode. So um, one of them, you know, schools stop doing Crazy Hair Days. A quote from the article, you know, the reason is that you are, albeit inadvertently, telegraphing to black kids, especially, but also every other child, that the ways in which we, black people, wear our hair aren't natural. This is just a small thing, but these small things add up and it becomes death by 10,000 paper cuts. Also, ask your kid's school not to call it crazy hair day either. This language is ableist and unduly stigmatizes people with mental illness. And when black hairstyles are worn and labeled as crazy, it also stigmatizes black people with mental illness. Another article is about the the problem with crazy hair day. So very simply put, many common ways for white girls to wear their hair on a crazy hair day are either suggestive, sometimes exaggerated versions or parodies, or direct examples of ways that Black girls wear their hair every day. I interpret Crazy Hair Day as a day to put your child's hair on display in a style that is weird, silly, or laughable. Though my daughter's ponytails were not the same as the hairstyles on uh, some other Black girls her age might wear, I felt I had implied that wearing her hair in multiple ponytails was abnormal. In a society where Black girls have been policed and even punished, by schools because of the ways that they wear their hair, I'm not comfortable in participating in that message. And so the previous quote there was from an article called The Problem with Crazy Hair Day. Other resources that we, you know, we shared when black hair violates the dress code. So in recent years, black girls have been sent home for wearing locks, head wraps, or even wearing their hair naturally. And then lastly, we shared an article, When Hair Breaks Rules, Some Black Children Are Getting in Trouble for Natural Hairstyles. The New York City Commission on Human Rights recognized a problem of discrimination based on a hairstyle with new guidance this week that classified such restrictions in workplaces, schools, and public places as racial discrimination. The guideline points specifically to the rights of people to maintain their natural hairstyle, treated or untreated hairstyles such as locks, cornrows, twists, braids, bantu knots, fades, afros, and or the right to keep their hair in an uncut or untrimmed state. Thanks for listening. In addition to, to, to pinning the, writing the letter, uh, also sharing some resources to open the conversation. 
So as I close, uh, this is a this is a peek into parenting while black, and it definitely starts early. So to to be black and and raise black children comes with a lifetime commitment to safeguarding their physical and emotional safety as much as possible as they navigate systems that are harmful to them. And the education system is but one of many. Thanks again for choosing the Notes from an Inspiring Humanitarian podcast. I look forward to engaging in the next episode. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. To find show notes for this and additional episodes, visit podcast.notesfromanaspiringhumanitarian.com. Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian is a labor of love and will continue to be. Consider supporting the work of Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian by becoming a monthly patron. Your contributions will help keep this resource alive and support its mission. Visit patreon.com slash nahblog to learn more and make a contribution of three, five, ten, or twenty dollars per month. Again, that's patreon.com slash nahblog. You can start or stop anytime. Thank you for joining me this week. Take care.